Yeah, I asked Bria this too. What does it mean to you to be back in Connecticut um, playing the Mohegan Sun? Well, obviously there's a lot of really uh, good memories here and uh, playing with, you know, UConn in terms of different games, conference tournaments every single year we're around here. So um, it's great to be back in Connecticut. I know every time that we come back here, the fans are absolutely incredible. Uh, it's like we never left. And so it's great to see some familiar faces and always a really good fan base to be around as well. Yeah, I know you guys probably don't have a lot of time this trip, but when you do have time, is there anything you have to do when you're in Connecticut? Any place you have to see, any restaurant you have to eat at or anything? Um, nothing specific. I do tend to have a little bit of a routine at uh, Mohegan Sun. Usually I go to Lush, then Krispy Kreme, and then Ben & Jerry's for a milkshake. So I'm sure that will be my uh, post-game milkshake tomorrow. <laughs> what flavor milkshake? Uh, cookies and cream, always. Okay, yeah. And then this is your first year with Phoenix. What is it like to be on a team where there's, you know, three other UConn grads, all different years, but what is it like to kind of have a little group with you? Well, I think obviously it speaks to a testament to what CD and coach have built here over the last number of years, because the longevity of UConn players in the WNBA, and we know that this is one of the hardest leagues to make in the world, um, the ability to have so many players across the league, and obviously a lot on our team as well, um, is absolutely incredible. And I think we all know and have gone through pretty similar stuff through college. And so when you get to the league, you know that a player that comes out of UConn, how they're going to play, how tough they are, how resilient they are, how hard they play, how smart they become as a basketball player. And so um, it's exciting to have that little group. And obviously it gives you a little bit of familiarity as well. Um, you know, when I first came into league, I'd seen Bria on campus. So it made it a little bit easier to kind of know someone on my team. And so that's been great as well. Yeah, and I just one final question, you know, if you could pick one big takeaway from your UConn days that you still use today, whether it's a piece of advice or just a specific drill or anything, what would be that one thing that you still use today from UConn? My three-point shot. Um, mm -hmm. When I got to UConn, I didn't have a whole lot of uh, shooting capabilities. It wasn't the first thing in my mind to do. I'd rather get to the rim and usually end up with some charge fouls here and there, but they stuck with me on my shot. They helped me change it and put little tweaks to it to make it where it is today. And uh, it's gotten me a long way. It's gotten me here. So appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Next up, we have Jeff Metcalf with the Arizona Republic, followed by Rafael Guillemente. There was a, a stretch last night um, when it was fairly, uh, let's see, I'm just looking at my notes here, fairly early in the fourth quarter where you guys went down by a point. And then you rattled off maybe eight points in a row. You had a steal. Tarazi had a steal. I think you had a block in there. Um, there was a lot of kind of defensive uh, generated stuff that happened right there that helped you get back up ahead. Now, I know they closed it later, but that stretch right there kind of showed to me what you guys can do when you when you really crank up the defense. Did, did, did that stand out to you, that particular period? Yeah, I think what we did as a team yesterday was we, we you know, showed a lot of heart. That was a, a grinded out win and, and, you know, credit to Minnesota and how they played. But I think for us, we know that we can score the ball. We have a number of different scorers. And obviously, um, when you have Diana Taurasi on your team, Brittany Grinder on the inside, Skylar Diggins and her ability to knock down the shot and also finish inside as well, you know you can put points on the board and that's never going to be a problem. It's your defense that we all understand is going to be important for us. And so we want to have an identity that is a tough defensive team. And I think in that stretch, we showed that when we were able to kind of get in our stance, lock down together and have great communication out there, good things can happen. And easy offense for us is running in transition. And the best way to do that is to play the defense that we did in that little stretch. Yeah, and getting out <clears throat> getting out um, on run outs and whatnot, that, that's obviously a strength of yours too. Um, and, you know, in a night like last night where you weren't necessarily shooting as well as you can, that, that's something you can do every night. Absolutely. I think for me, I, I try to stick with the couple things that are going well for me if something's not working. Um, and like you said, it wasn't my best shooting night. I thought I had some open looks that just didn't go down. And so I try to get to the rim a little bit more and out in transition is probably the best place for me to do that. I have a speed advantage on a lot of people, especially if they're running backwards and I'm coming with a full head of steam. And so it's really great to be on a team where you have Diana Taurasi, who's going to throw the ball um, almost kind of like a quarterback back there into some of those touchdown passes. She's going to throw it up ahead and give you opportunities to 
find one-on-one -on -one matchups that work. And so in transition last night, we tried to do that quite a bit and uh, we had some success there. Also, there were a couple of alley-oop plays to Turner that I I'm thinking if you're if you're an analyst, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, doing TV on those, you would have been pretty impressed by those. You're probably pretty impressed just watching them. But, you know, if you were commenting on, commentating on them, I would think even more so. Oh, absolutely. I think even from the angles that I had on the court, there was one where I was in the corner and she caught and it did not look like she could see the basket. And she finds it so quickly once she goes up for those alley-oops and with her athleticism, it's an easy way for us to score. And some of those passes were on target, some were a little bit harder to catch and she finished them. So you got to give all credit to Turner. Great. Thanks a lot. No worries. All right. Our final question here comes from Rafael Guillemette with Radio Canada. Hi, Kia. It's nice to see you. Um, I, I, I want to ask you a question about last night, uh, getting to play against Bridget and Natalie, uh, and, and just the coverage that the uh, WNBA gets in Canada. Uh, can you first talk about just the significance of last night's game between all you three Canadians in the WNBA? Well, I think it's a great start to the season to be able to have uh, the three of us all playing against one another. Obviously, uh, off of the court, when we're in the same uniform, it's a lot more fun than when we're playing against each other. But um, great for the coverage of Canada, great for the coverage of women's basketball in Canada and, and the products that we are continuing to put out, um, not only in the NCAA with some of the, the great performances that we've seen this year from our young women, um, but also in the WNBA as well. And then uh, our Olympic team too. And so I was excited to be out there with them. I think uh, I'm not sure our game was on TV there last night. I know there was some WNBA games that were on TV. The coverage is going to keep coming. I know we've got more and more games coming, um, at least from the Phoenix side, that'll be on TV in Canada. And so the more that we can continue to show young women there what they can become, um, the better. And I think everybody's starting to jump on board with that and helping to, to give us some more credit as we move forward. What do you make of your role as basically the face of women's basketball or professional basketball in Canada. It's kind of been that way for you for a bit now, dating back to your days in Yukon even. Yeah, it's an interesting role to be in. It comes with great responsibility, obviously, um, understanding the world that we live in today, especially with social media and all of the eyes that are on you and pretty much everything that you are doing. But for me, it's all about finding a way to give back. I grew up in Canada, Hamilton, Ontario, born and raised, stuck through there uh, for high school and went to a great college and then obviously had the ability to, to play at Pan Ams on home soil and whatnot. So it's all about finding a way to give back to the community that helped me get to where I am today and to also help inspire the next generation of young female basketball players, young male basketball players, because this sport can give you so much more than wins and losses. And I'm hoping that's what uh, they get if they get an opportunity to play.